Comparing Ionic and Molecular Compounds Lab. Introduction to this lab. The atoms in a compound are held together by chemical bonds. Chemical bonds are classified as covalent if the bond is formed when atoms share electrons. Compounds held together by covalent bonds are called molecular compounds. Bonds are classified as ionic bonds if the bond is formed when the atoms transfer electrons. The resulting cation and anions attract each other because they have opposite charges. Compounds held together by these ionic bonds are going to be called ionic compounds. The physical properties of a substance such as boiling point and solubility are characteristics of the types of bond holding together the atoms in a compound as well as the intermolecular forces between the molecules. In this experiment, you will explore the properties and use the data to classify each substance as ionic or covalent compound. Okay, so the objectives for this lab we're going to first compare the melting point, solubility, and electric um, conductivity of several solids. The solids that we will be testing in this lab are going to be the following. Sucrose, calcium chloride, magnesium sulfate, citric acid, sodium chloride, and paraffin wax. We're going to classify the solids as ionic, those that have ionic bonds, or molecular, those that have covalent. Um, covalent bonds. And then finally, we're going to summarize the properties of ionic and molecular compounds. Okay, these are the different substances that we will be testing in this lab. Um, I will go ahead and zoom each one of them in so that you can go ahead and write a brief description of each of them. Paraffin wax. Go ahead and write a description of paraffin wax. Sucrose, go ahead and write a description of what you see there, sucrose. Magnesium sulfates, go ahead and write a description for magnesium sulfates. Citric acid, go ahead and write a description for citric acid. Sodium chloride, go ahead and write a description for sodium chloride. Calcium chloride, go ahead and write a description for calcium chloride. For this next part of the lab, we're going to be looking at six substances and um, recording their melting point. So we have the six samples of the compounds. We have paraffin wax, citric acid, and sucrose. On the other side, we have calcium chloride, magnesium sulfate, and sodium chloride. We're going to go ahead and wait for this um, hot plate to heat up. And we're going to go ahead and see at what temperature the um, observe the changes of this compound by using this um, thermometer. So we can already see that the paraffin wax is already starting to melt. So that is going to be below 80 um, degrees Celsius. It does not require a lot to melt. We are starting to observe um, citric acid is starting to melt. So this is still a little bit below 80 degrees um, Celsius. So I'd estimate about um, 60 to 70 degrees Celsius for their melting point. Okay. 
and then for sucrose you can pretty much already see it melting and that one is almost at 80 degrees celsius so you can go ahead and record that temperature if you look at this compounds on this side um you're going to observe that there's no change yet so it's going to require a lot more heat so we're just going to go ahead and um for this next part of the life we're going to go ahead and be testing for the solubility Um, so for the solubility test, I will be putting a little bit of water in these wells and see if the compounds are going to dissolve in water. We're going to go ahead and start with calcium chloride. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab a stirring rod so that I can go ahead and stir this for a while and see if it will um, dissolve in water. As you can probably see, go ahead and do your observations. Go ahead and see whether it's going to be soluble or insoluble for calcium chloride. We're going to do the same process with paraffin wax. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of water and then bring the stirring rod so that I can go ahead and stir it to make sure that it um, will dissolve. And then let's go ahead and start making our observations to whether you think it's going to be soluble or insoluble. Next, I'm going to do the same process with sucrose, add a little bit of water, and then I'm gonna go ahead and um, stir it with the stirring rod. Then we're gonna go ahead and um, look at sucrose and decide whether it's going to be soluble or insoluble in water. All right, magnesium sulfate is next. Same process, we're going to go ahead and add some water to the well. And then we're going to go ahead and use our stirring rod to stir it to help us determine whether this is going to be soluble or insoluble in water. Go ahead and write your observations whether you think magnesium sulfate is um, soluble or insoluble. Next is going to be citric acid, same process, add some water to the well, and then I'm gonna go ahead and use the stirring rod to go ahead and um, dissolve and determine whether it's going to be soluble or insoluble in the water. Go ahead and write your observations, whether it's soluble or insoluble in water. And then finally, the last compound is going to be sodium chloride. Same process, add some water and use the stirring rod um, to stir it to determine whether it's going to be soluble or insoluble. Okay, let's go ahead and write your observations, whether you think it's going to be soluble or insoluble in water. Okay, so the final part of this lab is we are going to determine whether these compounds are going to conduct electricity. We're going to be using this device to test for that. If you see a rather uh, red or green, then that means it's going to be um, con um, conduct electricity. If you do not see them or it's very dim, you're going to notice that it does not conduct electricity. Here's the first one, sodium chloride. Citric acid.
magnesium sulfates sucrose paraffin wax and then the final one is going to be calcium chloride Finally, we have conducted all the objectives that we had for this lab and we're going to follow up with this analysis questions. According to your data, which substances were ionic? So the substances that you can choose from are going to be sucrose, calcium chloride, magnesium sulfate, citric acid, sodium chloride, and paraffin wax. What evidence do you have? whether um, they are going to be ionic. So make sure that you list all the substances that you think are ionic. And then based on the test that we had, go ahead and provide some evidence that you have. Um, number two, according to your data, which substances were molecular, meaning um, covalent? And then what evidence do you have? I want you to list all the compounds or substances um, that were molecular or covalent. And then finally, look at the chemical formulas for the substances. Can you tell just by looking at the chemical formulas whether the substance is ionic or covalent? And then explain to me why or why not.